sometimes when I have worked on cases, I haven't had people as devoted to the client as I felt they should be. But Project for the Innocent and then the Innocence Project Network that is, is spreading worldwide now, that's a different group of people. Their heart is, is truly devoted. Seventeen years. Seventeen years I spent in prison on this charge here. The most difficult part was, uh, I, I want to say, maybe the first five years. Because it was in the first five years that, uh, that I had to come to the conclusion that any help that I was going to be getting is going to come either, either via from some, it was going to be a stranger, that's the way I termed it, it was going to be a stranger that's going to either hear about, my, hear about my case and decide, look, this guy here got a, got a raw deal and want to help or it was going to be something that I had did and I knew that was going to take a long time. I'm a former prosecutor. It was my job to put people in prison every day. But I had a transformation because I've been teaching for 25 years and looking very critically at the criminal justice system and I realized that we make mistakes and we make tragic mistakes uh, that affect people's lives. And one of the people affected by this was this gentleman, Obi Anthony. He had a case that involved a murder that took place back in 1994. He had been serving since age 19, 17 years in prison for a murder he did not do. So when he heard that I was taking his case, I think he realized that somebody believed in him, that I wouldn't have taken a case like this unless I really, really believed it. Imagine being stuck in quicksand, here come an individual throwing a rope in the water and pulling you out. That relieving feeling that you know, okay, the rope is in the, in the sand now, I know I'm finna get out. Yeah. And so uh, that's what it was like for me when I, when, when I came along. The first time I went up to the prison to see him, he gave us, Deborah and I, like 20 things to investigate. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, yeah. You know, first, uh, first of all, it, it partially gave me more confidence that he was telling us the truth because he was working so hard. I always figure if the guy's trying to help uncover the truth, he must know that the truth is going to set him free because he's not going to help me find the thing that's going to keep him there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So then, you know, Deborah and I drive back from the prison and I'm just thinking to myself, I'm looking at all the stuff he's given us that I wrote down and I'm thinking, why didn't I think it happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he was always incredibly positive, incredibly helpful, incredibly insightful. I was excited about my, when I met them because I, it was like, for me, it was like, this is, for me, this, is, this was help, you know what I mean? And so uh, it's almost like being a, a drowning victim in the middle of the water and you, this, the rescue diver dives in. So when you see him, it's like, man, relief, help, say, it's a save, you know, some saving is coming. And here's what I would say. Uh, I trusted him, and that was so key to me, uh, to be able to trust him, and I liked him a lot. And I still like him a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the same thing, like, uh, I think um, when I first, as a matter of fact, my private investigator, Deborah Crawford, she says, uh, they didn't want to tell me that I had Lori Levinson, right? So, <laughs> and so, uh, so she said, Deborah says, okay, uh, one of your lawyer is, is Lori Levinson. And I said, okay, and Lori Levinson? I, I didn't know, right? And so, uh, so then when I got, but she said, oh, Miss Levinson, and she, then she began to tell me who she was, who she is, right? And so uh, I went back, and now I'm looking at these law books. I'm like, this is my lawyer right here. <laughs> and then what I realized, right, is that, is, I tell you, right, prayer works. Anybody want to know it? Absolutely works, right? And so, uh, so when I, I prayed to have, you know, just send me some individuals that's going to work hard and, you know, and get me home. And they sent me the best person ever. <laughs> and Adam, it was like, it was her protege. <laughs> and then Adam was like an individual, was like, man, it was like, uh, I think my first impression of Adam was like, it was like, man, all right, 
this is, I'm finna give Adam, I'm finna be giving this young man all of my truths right here. It's what he's <laughs> gonna do with it, right? What he's gonna do with it. But it was a good impression though, because again, you know, he was, uh, Adam, he came off again as an individual I, I felt as though he was gonna do what was supposed to be done. And not, you know what I mean? Like, uh, at this point, you gotta understand that I had already dealt with my first attorney, which was Pat. And then at this, I had come to a conclusion in him, as far as he was concerned, that all public defenders was basically only out to progress themselves and not to work in the best interest of, of, their, of their client. Then again, when I had, by this time, again, like I said, in my thinking and in my behavior and what I was doing myself, I had worked through, I had said to myself, look, in order for them to do a good job, I have to give them an opportunity to do a good job. That means that I couldn't fill my thoughts with negativity about his, what he could or couldn't do, right? So basically just going at it, having an open slate, blank mind about what it was finna transpire. And in doing so, it, get, it, 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 it pulled me to him in doing that. You know what I mean? So it was a good, it was good. When we went down to see him in lockup on the day that the ruling was coming down, we were, we were, like he said, we were a bundle of nerves. I was a mess that day. <laughs> because we're so fond of him as much as anything else. It, 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 you know, the idea that we might not be able to get it done and we might have to say goodbye to him and have Christmases where he's in prison for the rest of his life was almost too much for us to bear. And uh, so we go down to lockup and we're just, but professionally we have to tell him, yeah. you know, we can't guarantee what's gonna happen today, whatever. Uh, we're, you know, we'll try to work, we'll try to do something else, whatever. Yeah. And uh, he's literally saying to us, don't worry about it, it's fine. <laughs> we're gonna win, it's, it, the whole thing's fine. It, it really was such a bizarro, you know, it made you feel a little bit embarrassed that, <laughs> that you were taking this, you know, uh, but he had to help us, yeah. you know, regain our. Yeah. They like they taking it hard. I'm like, look, man, look, it's, look, you guys did a fabulous job. What are you worried about? <laughs> this is crazy. What are you worried about? You did exactly. You did the best job that could possibly happen. The judge is gonna rule in our favor. Don't worry about it. Yeah, he's a dream client. To be honest with you, an absolute dream client because he had a lot of lawyers to work with too in yeah. this case, and we're all different personalities. He put up well with us. Um, I could trust him. Uh, he had things to offer during the hearings, he's scribbling things, but he's acting very appropriately. And the judge really liked him too. I mean, I hope you have a chance to talk to the judge. But the judge saw all of those elements that you see today. What a wonderful human being, and what a terrible thing that's happened to him. So, you know, a free OB is an even better OB. So I would say. Yeah, frankly, from the minute you walked out of jail, and there were lots of hugs. It was a hug fest. Um, and then just staying in touch and seeing you get your life back together, um, your job. And then I want to say, OB was kind enough to come to my daughter's bat mitzvah. So that was really nice. Was my that first your first bat mitzvah? Yeah, my first one. I said, listen, and when I thought about it, I said, I can. I can. Can I have one? <laughs> no, can, can I have a bar and, and so you go from a, a client to a really dear friend. You know, a really dear yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, but it, for me, it's been a, it's been a good experience because again, it's uh, they, it's like uh, having continual help, right? They've helped me. They helped me get a job. They helped, you know, again, it was because of the, one of the students that was that was in that was Brooke, in, Brooke, Brooke Levin from Harvard Wesley. Yeah, Brooke. Uh, because of Brooke, uh, I was I'm. I'm working, you know what I mean? And so uh, it's help, helping help. So they helped me, she helped them help me. And so now I'm in a position where I can then put myself in a situation where I can help someone else. And so it's just about continuing that cycle. And the only way I can be able to do that, I have to be in the chain, I have to be in line with that happening. And so uh, it's been an absolute pleasure since I've been home. So I, I tell them all the time, look, call me, look, you can, I don't care. Look, just call me and tell me the word you need me to be. I'm gonna be there. So that's what it is. But you know, the real pleasure is when we can when you just sitting and having a beer with Obi in a nice place yeah. that you, something you envisioned when he was on the inside and hoped that you could that would actually happen one day yeah. that's the real pleasure for us there was one thing you know, a simple thank you that you could say to professor Levinson and Adam Grant what would it be I'll take him to Italy <laughs> <laughs> I'll take him to Italy oh you know I think cuz I, I just Italy is a beautiful place 
And uh, I think that would be the closest thing that I could probably, in my mind, that I could possibly do, just probably take them and say, look, come over here and, you know, take your shoes off and relax. <laughs> Let me be able to, you know, take care of you for a couple of weeks over here. <laughs> Kid after Obi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I named the middle name. <laughs> I named my dog after one of the what is, what one, is? Of, one of John Jones' henchmen. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Fast Eddie. Yeah, Fast, Fast Eddie. Eddie. Yeah. Fast Eddie. <laughs>